Oh, you shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. Melakaliki maka is the thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Christmas songs. For today's list, we'll be looking at the Christmas songs that make you wonder if once a year is just a little too often. While Christmas songs in general are a mixed bag to say the least, we will be looking at particular recordings rather than just the songs in general. Number 10, I'm Getting Nuttin' for Christmas, Reliant K. Dating back to 1955, Nuttin' for Christmas is a weak member of the Christmas canon at the best of times. The song has been a good fit for child singers like Shirley Temple, an oddly saucy vehicle for full-grown adults like Eartha Kitt, and was a buffoonishly goofy track when Smash Mouth teamed up with Rosie O'Donnell. But then, this happened. Reliant K's take on the track is all over the place, from its ill-fitting faux punk attitude to the thankfully brief polka segment. Stranger still, the song ends with someone rambling about the polar ice caps melting and upsetting Santa, which thankfully is quickly shot down. Number 9, Mele Kaliki Maka, She and Him. Most versions of this Hawaiian-flavored classic tend to be upbeat and bouncy. Not so this time around. The sun to shine by day and all the stars at night. Sounding like it's being played back on a turntable with a bad belt or a Walkman with dying batteries, she and him's take on Mele Kalikimaka borders on mournful. The steel guitar is a good idea in theory, but it sounds more haunting than festive. And some drums wouldn't go unnoticed, although the quick guitar solo is very much on point. However, aside from the Andrew Sisters style harmonies, the vocals are fairly lifeless, and with the instrument so low in the mix, one wonders why they didn't just go a cappella and be done with it. Say Merry Christmas to you. Number 8, Funky Funky Christmas, New Kids on the Block. Christmas music is a lucrative market. Do it right, and you're set for life. So you can't blame a Wahlberg for trying. Credited to Donnie and Maurice Starr, Funky Funky Christmas doesn't really live up to its funky funky title. The bass line has potential, but beyond that, there's very little funk to be found. The drums sound suspiciously Casio, while Santa sounds a bit like a guy from Boston with a mouthful of dinner rolls, neither of which are terribly funky. Additionally, aside from our preconceived notions of what funk is and isn't, New Kids on the Block never really established what constitutes a funky funky Christmas, or how exactly one can funk up their holidays. Number 7, Spin Me a Christmas, Aqua. Hey, comes the snow at Christmas. It's really hard to know exactly what Aqua wants us to take from all this. A thick slice of the band's over-the-top Europop, Spin Me a Christmas doesn't really have many of the seasonal trappings. With its fake plastic snow, stabs on Hollywood ideals, and the commercial side of the holidays, it sounds like an attack on the phoniness of the modern Christmas. But it's hard to tell. Do they hate the phoniness? Do they love the phoniness? Or do they just love and hate that everyone else loves and hates the phoniness? Do they not like Wham? And why didn't they key out the green screen from the igloo's foyer? These questions are far too complex when you're starry-eyed and full of eggnog. Number 6, The Christmas Shoes, New Song. For my mama. Oh, there's so much to unpack here. Let's ignore that somehow this song led to a novella that led to a TV movie that hopefully led to Rob Lowe profiting handsomely. Let's also ignore the overly dramatic key change, the awful piezo acoustic guitar, and the addition of a children's choir. Could you hear me Daddy says there's not much time. This boy's mother is potentially hours from death. Why is he buying her shoes? Are these shoes in heaven? Are these shoes dying too? 
She's been sick for quite a while and know these shoes will make her smile. The boy explains the shoes are so that his mother can look good for Jesus, but Jesus didn't even wear shoes. He died barefoot and lived an entire life without having ever seen shoes. That's just rude, especially on his birthday. The narrator then suggests that all of this was so that he could relearn the true meaning of Christmas, which would mean God put this young boy and his mother through a life of misery just to teach a Dan Hill wannabe a lesson in charity. Number 5. Murder City Christmas, Insane Clown Posse, and Twisted. Well, unlike some Christmas songs, it is funky, but it's also troubled. Painting a world where Santa does PCP and snow comes with a straw, Murder City Christmas is not exactly a hallmark picture of the holidays. On the west side, people got kids to feed. Mom's a hooker and I'm selling brown weed. Jimmy Madrox describes himself as a recreational serial killer longing to turn pro, while Shaggy Too Dope is busy calling in New Year's Eve bomb threats. Worse still, Noxide Child is out to kill some mother fudger, and Violent J is under the mistaken belief that Rudolph is some sort of low-level pimp and not a red-nosed reindeer. On the west side, Rudolph's red light nose means cheap ass sex from his strung out hose. The narrative is also inconsistent with Santa, who abruptly switches from PCP to crack, and from being mugged to trading VCRs for marijuana buds. Hey, on the west side, we got Santa the crack to get you a VCR for a dime bag. Fortunately, the track is fairly rare, at least in its physical form, as the only copies pressed were given away to audience members at a 2005 concert. Number 4. Ex Tina's Xmas, Christina Aguilera. It may be a prodding, pointless bit of hip hop. It may even be the result of someone getting a synth and sampler for Christmas. And it's possible it exists only to grab some songwriting royalties on an album filled with cover tracks. But consider this at least it's short. And she's not wrong, it is Christmas time. Number 3 Christmas Tree, Lady Gaga. Sampling Deck the Halls and Little Drummer Boy and backed with a rhythm that'll have you sticking your chest out in time, Lady Gaga's Christmas Tree may not be what it seems. Picking up on Jimmy Butler's Christmas Tree as a Lady Garden metaphor, the presented evidence seems to suggest it's not Christmas cheer Gaga's spreading at all. With her tree taken to be her baby hatch, coupled with her request to be on top, her nude associate's desire to be under said tree, and her repeated claims that her tree is delicious, all signs suggest it's not Santa's lap Miss Germanata intends to sit on. Yes, everybody knows we will take off our clothes. Well, that and Gaga herself has suggested that Christmas is the horniest of the holidays. Here we go. Cherry, cherry, boom, boom. Number 2, Drummer Boy, Justin Bieber and Busta Rhymes. Coming from Bieber's star-packed billboard topping Under the Mistletoe album, Drummer Boy ultimately amounts to a lame cover of an already lame song. Featuring a snare drum that sounds like a pan of Jiffy Pop, Biebs has trouble sticking to the song's fairly limited melody and sings in a way that seems to anticipate auto-tune. Lyrically, things don't fare much better. While it's already a terrible idea to play drums for an infant, it's unlikely the baby Jesus, or his Aramaic-speaking parents, would be all that impressed with Bieber's totally dope rhymes and 20th century references. Furthermore, standing figuratively before the baby Jesus, JB shows no humility, but is instead surprised that the Book of Justin didn't make it into the Bible. So I think some of you need to act well. Give a kid to a drive, let's change the glow. Before we unwrap our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Wonderful Christmas Time, Paul McCartney. 
We're here tonight. Enough. Routinely named as one of the worst songs ever written by anyone, Beatle or otherwise, Wonderful Christmas Time splits the room from the first note. Featuring McCartney alone noodling on a sequential Circuits 5 Prophet synthesizer, the track actually hit number 6 in the UK when it was released, but barely charted at all in the United States, and missed the Billboard Hot 100 completely. We're simply having a wonderful Christmas time. The textbook example of post beatle criticism towards McCartney, Wonderful Christmas Time is vapidly uninspired, monotonous, and repetitive, but yet, it gets covered. And despite being a Christmas favorite of virtually no one, the track not only gets consistent seasonal airplay, but also reportedly earns Maka a cool $400,000 in royalties every year. It's simply a baffling Christmas tune. So, do you agree with our list? What's the worst Christmas song you've ever heard? For more Yule logging top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.